Hello and welcome to Jazz Guitar Chord Melody, Part 30. Hi, I'm Mike Hayes, and in this session, we'll be exploring ways of playing the minor sixth chord over dominant seventh chords to create a whole series of altered dominant seventh chords. In other words, we'll be looking at ways of increasing tension in our music. Now, you might be thinking, hey, Mike, I've got enough tension in my life. But actually, in music, providing you can resolve that tension, it's a great thing. So just a quick reminder before we get started to subscribe if you haven't already, so you don't miss out on all the good stuff. So let's get started. In Jazz Guitar Part 20, we introduce the idea of playing a minor sixth chord on the fifth of the dominant. In other words, if the band was playing F7, we could play C minor 6th. If the band was playing B flat 7th, we could play F minor 6th. If this is a new concept for you, you might want to check out Jazz Guitar Chord Melody Part 20. In a nutshell, when you play a minor 6th on the 5th of a dominant, it's like playing a dominant ninth without the root. Let's have a closer look and see what happens when we play a C minor 6th over an F dominant 7th chord. Using the C minor 6th chord shape that you see on the screen, we're going to go through each note in the C minor 6th chord and see the relationship of these notes in the C minor 6th chord in relation to an F7. The G note is the ninth of F7. The C is the fifth. The A is the third. The E flat is the flat seven. And now I'd like to introduce another way that we can play a minor sixth chord over a dominant seven. We can play the minor sixth on the flat two of the dominant. Okay, let's see what happens when we play a G flat minor sixth over an F seventh. Using the G flat minor sixth chord shape that you see on the screen, let's go for every note and see their relationship to F seven. The G flat is the flat nine. D flat is the flat thirteen or sharp five. A is the third, and E flat is the flat seven. So as you can see, the minor sixth on the flat two of a dominant creates the altered sounds. Right then, so our first project will be to learn the four inversions of G flat minor sixth. Here we go. The next step will be to go through and learn the notes in the G flat minor sixth diminished scale. And we'll learn this scale on the first string. Here are the notes in the G flat minor sixth diminished scale. G flat, A flat, B double flat, C flat, D flat, D, E flat, F. Now there's a couple of notes in there that may be new to you. B double flat could also be referred to as A. C flat could be referred to as the note B. So let's practice that scale on the first string. Our 
Our next step will be to play the G flat minor sixth diminished scale as chords. The notes in a G flat minor sixth chord are G flat, A, D flat, E flat. Notice how I referred to the note A, and I'm doing this to keep things very simple. Technically, that note would be called B double flat. And you'll recall the idea of how we create these scales in that we're connecting the four inversions of G minor sixth with diminished chords. So essentially, on each of the chord notes in the scale, that's G flat, A, D flat, and E flat, we're going to play an inversion of the G flat minor sixth chord. On all the other notes, the non chord notes, we're going to play a diminished seventh chord. Here we go. And now let's have a look at a practical application of the type of things that we've been learning so far. So I'm going to put on a four bar chord progression. It'll be two bars of F7 going to two bars of B flat. Now the band's going to be playing F7, I'm going to be playing C minor 6th. When the background moves to B flat, I'm going to be playing B flat 6. And I'm going to be moving up the neck of the guitar playing all the different inversions of C minor 6th and then having that C minor 6 resolve to B flat 6. OK, here we go. Let's have a look at one more example where we'll apply the information that we learnt in today's video. Over the F7, I'll be playing C minor 6, then G flat minor 6 to add extra tension, then moving on to B flat 6. And once again, I'll be moving up through all the different inversions of the C minor 6, the G flat minor 6, and then resolving to the B flat 6. Here we go.
Okay, that's it for this session, folks. I do hope you've got a lot out of it. And don't forget, if you have any questions or comments, to pop them in the comments section below this video. And as always, I look forward to catching up with you again next time. Bye for now.